Being part of a fan base is a beautiful thing. Within the walls of the video game digital clubhouse, we can share stories about favourite characters, dreams for the future, which sequel was the best, but also on dark and stormy nights about the things that we hate about the franchises that we love so very much. You see, for the most part, we as a collective aren't that stupid, and even die-hard fans will call into question some of the rather dubious choices developers try to inflict on us. After all, there's only so much you can stand before you gotta cash in your chips and leave your head held high. So let's briefly stop attacking each other's favourite games and look inward at our own royal slip-ups. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 exact moments that made fans hate gaming franchises. Number 10. Chris Punches a Boulder – Resident Evil 5 Resident Evil 5 was, in short, a very banter game. It took most of the goodwill generated from Resident Evil 4 and doubled down on the action, which as a result, dialed down the horror elements. The addition of a capable buddy character in the form of Sheva diluted most of the series' signature tension, especially if you decided to play the game co-op with an actual human, rather than relying on the, let's just say, subpar AI. But there's one single moment in Resident Evil 5 that really typifies the series' divergence away from horror towards bro action shenanigans, and that's when Chris Redfield repeatedly punches a boulder, blocking his way in the game's climax. Now this is the thing, Resident Evil has always been pretty daft, but this was the wrong kind of daft. It was taking the mad scientist guff and spooky mansions of before and literally punching them in the face. Yet Capcom didn't seem to hear this message and went even further down the route of action with Resident Evil 6, and wouldn't you know it, that entry is widely looked on as one of the weakest games in the franchise. Thank God for the partway fixing that Resident Evil 7 has done for the series, right? Number 9. Call of Duty in Space Call of Duty Infinite Warfare certainly wasn't the first entry into the franchise to dip its feet in the sci-fi genre, but while previous games featured increasingly outlandish technology, speculative visions of the future, and awesome exosuits, 2016's entry into the annual franchise took a full-fledged sojourn into space. The game's reveal trailer alone was met with overwhelming disdain from the fanbase, receiving 3.81 million dislikes on YouTube, making it the sixth most disliked video on the platform just behind that video of your mother making sweet passions with me and that horse while I'm wearing that Nixon mask. And that's kind of impressive. Also my one per list. The game itself was pretty mechanically sound, but as a concept it was literally one giant leap over the shark and was too much for fans to handle. And if you're looking for reasons as to why people hated it so much, then it might well be that this was the third COD game to go with the future aesthetic and signalled that maybe Activision was running dry on ideas. Number 8. The release of Fallout 76 I know it always seems that we're bashing on this game, and I know that fun can be had within its walls, but you've got to admit when we finally got the multiplayer Fallout that we dreamed for for years, it was a bit of a nightmare. 76 launched in a blatantly unfinished, rushed-out state, touting horrendous performance issues, a bafflingly barren open world, a misguided online-only approach, and an infuriatingly fiddly matchmaking system. Fans and critics registered their dissatisfaction vocally, resulting in Bethesda's worst-reviewed game in over a decade, and prompting it to be heavily discounted after just a week of sale. If the game's launch being a disaster wasn't bad enough, Bethesda initially buried their head in the sand amidst the criticism, trying to pass it off as a joke at this year's E3. For many, this was the final straw, and as such are already moaning about how Fallout 5 will reflect these horrible decisions even further. And with a fan base that gave mixed responses to Fallout 4, things are looking not so rad for Bethesda as to whether they can survive this nuclear winter. Number 7. All the Quiet Fan Service – Metal Gear Solid Metal Gear Solid 5 might be the most frustratingly brilliant game ever made, because despite how note-perfect its moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is, it's filled with missed opportunities and eyebrow-raising indulgences all at the same time. In the lead-up to Metal Gear Solid 5's release, discussions intensified surrounding the game's depiction of its heroine sidekick Quiet, who appeared to spend the entire game dressed in, well, let's just say absurdly skimpy, totally impractical clothing. Yeah, that's about right. Now, Kojima addressed the criticism head-on before the game hit stores, claiming that once you recognise the secret reason for her exposure, you will feel ashamed of your words and deeds. 
Of course, as it turned out, the explanation for Quiet's lack of clothing was utterly laughable. She breathes and takes in nutrients through her skin, requiring her to bear as much skin as possible. Now listen man, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what's what. It's you're mostly adults and you can like whatever you like and you shouldn't let a man who makes mum jokes tell you how to get your rocks off. But what's the excuse as to why she dressed this way plausible? Maybe. Were the helicopter photo shoot poses pretty embarrassing? Well, put it this way, if my partner had walked in while these were on, it would have been close all ignito tab speeds in which I'd change the bloody channel. Number 6. Dante Gets a Makeover Devil May Cry Ninja Theory's 2013 DMC reboot was always going to be a tough proposition to fans, and Capcom sure didn't help things by insisting on a drastic redesign of the beloved protagonist Dante in the hopes of appealing to a younger fanbase. Though DMC was actually a relatively fun game, it required players to deal with a garishly reimagined character who lacked all the charm and badass look of the classic. And because of Capcom doubling down so hard on this look in the game, it really didn't sit well with fans who were complaining. Sure, a reboot is allowed to twist the formula, but here it just felt like a 60-year-old studio executive had been asked to design an emo based on what the Daily Mail had been saying about them. Fans spoke with their wallets, and the commercial standing of DMC was far lower than that of other entries in the series. Luckily, we got things back on track after six years of waiting with the original Dante at the helm. Number 5. Samus Freaks Out Over Ridley Metroid As Nintendo epically dragged their feet on delivering a still gestating follow-up to 2007's Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, Metroid fans had to make do with the 2020 interquel Metroid Other M, a game that single-handedly ruined the series' much-loved hero, Samus Aran. In a misguided attempt to lend greater psychological depth to Samus, the alien slaughtering icon was reconceived as a fragile, scared young woman in a manner that was totally inconsistent with her prior, albeit mysterious, established character. And what this creates is a shocking disconnect between the gameplay and the cutscenes, with the scripted events making Samus seem like a totally different character. Which leads us to the worst of these moments where Samus confronts Ridley. Here she freezes up, panics and basically doesn't behave remotely how fans expected her to. Now bear in mind, she's already kicked Ridley's ass countless times before, but now was acting in a manner which screamed that the devs had no understanding of her central character. Thankfully, 2017's Metroid Samus Returns got the character back on terror firmer, although it falls to the upcoming Metroid Prime 4 to fully restore Samus' reputation. Number 4. Unity's glitch-filled release – Assassin's Creed the Assassin's Creed franchise may have flirted with creative bankruptcy across its original run of annualized releases, but at least the games were genuinely slick, well-oiled products that launched in a relatively healthy state. That is, until the release of 2014's Assassin's Creed Unity. Pre-release, it looked like Unity would be a pretty smooth launch for the series, until players and the press got their hands on it and realized it was rife with bugs, ranging from the hilarious to the downright horrifying. Unity had an especially disturbing tendency to not load facial textures correctly, resulting in grotesque abominations which were fun the first few times and then infuriating beyond this. In fact, the state of the game was so bad that Ubisoft even discontinued its season pass while offering ripped off players the ability to download a recent Ubisoft game as compensation. For many players, this killed the streak of well-crafted AAA tentpoles the series had delivered, and once that spell is broken, it takes a long time for the scars to heal. For many, this was the point that they stepped away from the series, and it's been up to Ubisoft to work especially hard to get them back on board since. Number 3. Eli Dies On a Cliffhanger Half-Life Oh, Half-Life, how we loved you so. Now, to be completely transparent, this air quotes hatred of a franchise has nothing to do with the quality of the Half-Life games whatsoever. They're all sharp, entertaining shooters that deliver some of the best gameplay that Rich can shake a stick at. Seriously, I could not badmouth this series as I know his little hairy face would get too sad. No, instead, the dislike has come from the cliffhanger ending. The death of Eli and no sign on the horizon that Valve is going to do anything about it. The lack of communication and their staunch refusal to confirm any interest in renewing the series has made the public sour on the team. Now, understandably, they have a lot on their plate with the great job that they're doing of keeping Steam trash free. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. But seriously, Valve, stop teasing my Gordons. Either say that you will and we can all be happy, or say flat out, no, it's dead and we can move on with our lives. Number two, pick a color, any color. Mass Effect. 
Just, ooh, ooh, I remember where I was when I got to the end of Mass Effect 3. God damn, I was spicy. Now, luckily, through old contracts and an old job, I'd secured an early copy. I played through it with my friends and had them over to witness the final sum of all of our collective choices made through this lengthy trilogy. And then, that moment, the Simon Says Pick Your Own Mountain Dew Color ending, and I was absolutely seething. Now, now you've not seen me seethe, but trust me, if I was veiny before, I was bloody pulsating then. The idea that quite literally hundreds of hours boiled down to this was just so deflating. And I know that it was a huge issue for the developers to make these choices impactful, but the delivery made them feel just inconsequential. The result was one of the most vocally angry backlashes in video game history, with fans even exploring legal options against Bioware for false advertising, which it was ultimately deemed that the game was not guilty of. I mean, that is a little far in my eyes, but it's clear that people were riled. But don't worry, luckily things got fixed with the release of Andromeda! Alright. And number one, loot boxes. Loot boxes everywhere. Star Wars Battlefront. EA did a fantastic job convincing fans that 2017's sequel to the rather bare-bones first reboot, Battlefront 2, would be everything the first game wasn't. And to fans and industry analysts alike, there was no reason to expect anything less than solid reviews. But Battlefront 2 ended up being skewered by press and players alike for its invasive loot box mechanics, which introduced pay-to-win incentives for those who threw down real-life money for the chance of scoring major gameplay advantages. Amid mounting fan pressure, EA dug a hole for themselves with their deeply misjudged response, which became the most downvoted comment in Reddit history at the time, and quickly removed microtransactions in order to stem the tide of negativity. But the damage had already been done. EA's share price tumbled a historic $3 billion, and though the game still sold incredibly well, it missed a sales target due to the wave of incredibly bad PR surrounding the loot box controversy. It's safe to say that after having been burned twice in a row by EA, many fans will be giving the inevitable Battlefront 3 a miss, and hoping that one day the license will fall to someone else. And Disney did consider it for a while, so who knows? And there we go, those were 10 exact moments that made fans hate gaming franchises. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, my friends, and I hope that you have a bloody good day. If you want to chat about video games, films, comics, and anything else what culture related, you can do so with me at RetroJ with a zero. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!